Genevian philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau once said, The world of reality has its limits, but the world of imagination is boundless. Imagination is what fuels our creativity, and creativity can lead us to making different types of art that can go on to inspire the masses. Arguably one of our earliest experiences exploring our imagination and creativity is through role-playing with toys as young children. Quoted in an article from The Guardian, a study had shown that playing with dolls encouraged children to talk more about others thoughts and emotions. The research suggested that playing imaginary games with dolls could help children develop social skills, theory of mind, and empathy. Expressive, trendy, and intuitive toys can color a young child's palette and foster their storytelling abilities. The fashion doll, for example, can act as an expressive outlet for a child to discover the pleasures of mixing and matching wardrobes and learning about style and coordination. This experience can translate into adulthood as a person is coming into their own individual individuality. They'll go on to learn that what might look nice to one person may look completely different to another, and that fashion is entirely subjective. This would explain why some fashion trends are praised in one part of the globe and can be considered totally distasteful in the other. Today's episode echoes a similar sentiment, with a mystery sitting beyond our grasp and seemingly lost in translation. In tonight's episode of Tales of the Lost, I try my hand at finding the lost fashion relic of Girl World. We've made some pretty groundbreaking discoveries in Girl games, but tonight I take a dive into the land of dolls to investigate a property from a line of fashion dolls known as Bratz, specifically a lost relic with international origins, a series of lost episodes for the Japanese exclusive miniseries known as Cool TV, a curious piece of media that has long been estranged from the United States and completely untraceable for the last 20 years. Tonight, I'm going to attempt to find it. Follow me as I investigate and rearrange new leads and pieces of evidence, linking me closer to uncovering this brat's mystery with a heavy language barrier and old outdated archives of material partially lost to time. Was I able to dig my way to the other side, or did I find myself trapped in an archive of dead ends? Find out what happens next on Brats of the Lost Media, The Mystery of Cool TV. But first, doing deep dive investigations can sometimes feel like I'm stepping on landmines. Don't get me wrong, I love being a cyber sleuth, but this job sometimes requires me having to go pretty much to the swampiest of unprotected websites. Sometimes what might look like a hot piece of evidence could turn out to be a malicious virus waiting to wreak havoc on my PC. But I gotta risk it to get the biscuit. That's why today's video is partnered by NordVPN. Using NordVPN protects me from all the unwanted phishing emails and malware attacks. I had to sift through so many emails, and what might first appear like a shared link from a well-meaning viewer could actually be a hacker hoping I fall right into their web of destruction. Oh, look at that! The Library of Congress! Wait a minute. Luckily, Nord's threat protection feature can recognize malicious links and warn me about dangerous websites hiding malware before I even have to click anything. And you can protect your PC too by signing on to their amazing two-year plan, plus one month free, using my custom URL, nordvpn.com slash raymona. That's nordvpn.com slash raymona. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. So if it's not for you, you can return it without any hassle. It's just that easy. And now, back to our regular programming.
In the year 2001, MGA Entertainment launched a new brand of fashion dolls with a focus on diversity, individuality, and empowerment. These dolls were introduced as Bratz dolls. This widely appealing doll eventually grew to usurping Barbie as the top-selling fashion doll of the early 2000s. The Bratz dolls became an instant hit and quickly gained popularity in the West. The brand's success led to the creation of direct DVD movies, animated series, a live-action movie, and a range of merchandise. And with the research of Y2K fashion in the last five years, the dolls have made a bit of a comeback into public favor, reigniting nostalgia and fashion inspiration to millennials and mature Gen Z everywhere. The Bratz impact on the toy industry and pop culture is undeniable, and its legacy continues to influence today's generation of young girls. In recent years, the meme-worthy potential of the original Bratz television series has also given it somewhat of a second life on social apps like Twitter, and many fans not only rejoiced over the return of the doll line in 2018, but we're just as excited to see the girls on screen return in their new 2021 web series titled Talking Bratz. However, what if I told you that the first television debut of the Bratz dolls wasn't actually the iconic 2004 animated series we all came to know and love? What if I told you that back in 2003, a year before the debut of the American series, there had been a lesser known program that was floating around overseas? It all started with MGA Entertainment's venture into international media. With Bratz becoming a household name in the West, MGA saw an opportunity to further capitalize on the dolls by marketing them to an international audience. Though Bratz had a slow introduction during their 2001 debut, they quickly rose to popularity by Christmas and became the top-selling doll in the United States. In the first half decade since their debut, 125 million products were sold worldwide, with global sales of Bratz and Bratz products grossing over $2 billion by 2005. With its quick rise in the toy market towards the end of 2001, the next logical step in MGA Entertainment's financial venture was to shop the dolls to the country with one of the largest toy markets, being Japan. Pretty soon, MGA teamed up with the Japanese toy line Tomi to redistribute the dolls now under the title Cool Bratz. However, Japanese consumers did not take well to the dolls, and executives and investors were shocked to discover that the large, doe-eyed, fashion-forward dolls did not perform anywhere close to where they had hoped. With that initial failure of the Tomi line, a new plan had to be put in place to ensure the continued success and growth of the brand. This is where a new and more aggressive marketing campaign would be put into action. In January of 2003, MGA Entertainment partnered with toy company Takara and music label Avex and announced that they would jointly promote the doll and start retailing in Japan at a more affordable price point from their original release. With their relaunch in Japan, MGA wanted to reintroduce the Bratz not just as fashion dolls, but also rebrand them as virtual artists, basically digital idols. Around that time, idol culture in Japan had risen to popularity after the success of the 1997 pop group Morning Musume. Their hope was that by making the Bratz share more similarities to current pop culture and trends in Japan, this would aid in the doll line's likability and future success. Between their partnership with Avex, their first debut single, Show Me What You Got, featuring Japanese artist Boa and Howie D of the Backstreet Boys, was released in August of 2000. The song was accompanied by two B-sides, Can You Feel the Beat and Distance, also performed by Boa. This was swiftly followed by the release of Look Around, featuring Christina Milian and Verbal in November of 2003. Both Show Me What You Got and Look Around were released exclusively for the Japanese market. In addition to their music ventures, they would also go on to partner with the candy company Morinaga, and the Bratz dolls would be featured in a number of their baked chocolate ads. All of these new initiatives to reintroduce the brand to their redistribution of the toy line, their album releases, and special brand deals were all meticulously woven together with the release of the Bratz' first ever Japanese exclusive television series known as Cool TV. Cool TV was a stop-motion series of shorts that aired on Nippon TV in an attempt to further break Bratz into the Japanese market. It was the first ever television series released under the Bratz brand and was an exclusively Japanese series that featured a much different storyline and animation style to that of the subsequent 2004 animated series. Cool TV is said to have followed the Bratz on their many adventures in Japan. It was produced by Avex Media and MGA Entertainment, and it was thought to have aired from July of 2003, ending sometime 
sometime around September of that same year. The single Show Me What You Got by Boa was reportedly used as the show's theme song. Unique to the later series that would typically star the main Bratz pack being Chloe, Jade, Sasha, and Yasmin, Cool TV instead featured Dana, a character from the doll line, as an additional fifth main character. Unfortunately, though this hefty marketing campaign by MGA Entertainment was ambitious, the series, along with the aggressive marketing campaign that surrounded it, was not enough to secure a home for the Bratz in Japan, and the television series was subsequently cancelled after only a few episodes. Because of the show's limited release, and no at-home recordings of the series besides a leaked behind-the-scenes photo and a clip rumored to be connected to the series, very little remains. The Cool TV series remains historic as it's the first Bratz show to ever be produced and has become a rare gem amongst fans. And hopefully today, I can get some steps closer to finding it myself. Though Cool TV has seemingly fallen off the face of the earth, I want to attempt to find some traces of it through the little pieces of evidence that still remain scattered on the web. Whether or not this evidence can help me, only time will tell. But right now, I know the best place to start. I knew that my first point of interest would be the Cool TV Wiki. Before I could carry out my investigation, I needed an accurate starting point. It's important to analyze what we already have and confirm or debunk pieces of evidence wherever we can. By the time I reached the end of this journey, I aimed to have fully validated all known facts. I've dubbed this the debunking and debriefing phase, and my first order of business was to delve into the specifics of this lost media. I wanted to meticulously outline what information was currently available, what's been uncovered thus far about the series, and what potential leads could could be examined to unearth more secrets. Fortunately, the Cool TV Wiki proved to be the ideal launchpad for my entire investigation. And this is when I noticed my first problem. Even though the Wiki was ripe with details on the series, it was also a bit of a mess. I couldn't say for sure how much of this information was accurate, as it had been documented mostly from unverified sources. Right away, I had noticed some inconsistencies in what had been recorded on the series. For example, the Wiki said Cool TV had aired on Nippon TV and had a runtime of only two minutes, and had a single season with only a single episode. We know for a fact that this recorded information is not entirely accurate, as the show had not only been announced as a reoccurring series, but other websites would also go on to write multiple episodes had aired before its cancellation. Hopefully as the investigation proceeded, these facts could further be fleshed out and rearranged, and as we find more sources, it can hopefully lead us in sorting through what is fact from fiction. Currently, these were the the known remnants of Cool TV that still existed on the internet. 1. The Cool TV Logo From an unknown source, submitted on the wiki was an informational card about the series that reveals what the Cool TV logo had looked like. The card had been translated by fans. It labeled what station it aired on, and also stated in military time when the series aired at, being 9.54pm in standard time. The card also mentions Boa's Show Me What You've Got single, and though not provided in the image, it states that the card is enclosed with a Bratz sticker. Number 2. Our next piece of evidence is the wiki covering the chocolate bake ads. As mentioned earlier, MGA Entertainment had teamed up with Morinaga to produce Bratz ads for their chocolate bake candy. According to the wiki photos, these ads included some sort of contest where stickers packaged with baked chocolate could be entered in a sweepstakes to win a Funk and Glow 2nd edition doll or t-shirt. A photo of one of the doll prizes had been submitted to the wiki, along with character sheets that were given out to competition winners. At the present moment, it's not known Known where these photos had surfaced from. Next was the documented Avex music venture. We also know from the wiki that music had been produced with Avex Media, with releases from both artists Boa and Christina Milian, with Boa's song acting as the intro theme, perhaps using the Wayback Machine to investigate both the Avex Media website and Boa's official website in 2003 would reveal more information regarding the Cool TV series. Next up was the behind-the-scenes image and mysterious video. These 
These existing remnants had not only been listed on the wiki, but a good chunk of details on the series had also been sourced from a Bratz fan site known as Lookin' Bratz. Upon investigating, the website had revealed what looked to be a mysterious behind-the-scenes photo from Cool TV, currently our only known visual of the series. On top of this, a short trailer had also been documented on the website and was said to have been sourced from a site called Bratz Mania in the early 2000s. The owner of Lookin' Bratz goes on to speculate that this short clip might have some relation to the Lost Cool TV series. On that very same website, the owner had managed to recover wallpapers found on the Bratz website back in 2003, used as promotional images for both Cool TV and Show Me What You Got. Knowing this, it only made sense that I should try to use the Wayback Machine to see if I could find any new information regarding the series from the Bratz official webpage, Boa's website, and also, if possible, the Nippon TV page to see if there was any listings of the series. Lastly, and sourced straight from the wiki, I figured it would also be worth investigating the actresses named to have played each of the characters in this adaptation. Perhaps it would be a possibility that one of these actresses had some sort of social presence and would give me an even greater chance of making contact if one of them also spoke English. With the exception of the Lookin' Bratz website, I was lucky that there had been so many little details sprinkled onto the wiki for me to explore. However, I couldn't help but feel perplexed that none of these details had any original source cited. This raised a slew of unanswered questions in my mind. For instance, where did these photos taken of the prizes from the baked chocolate contest originate from? How did the owner of Lookin' Bratz manage to snag that behind the scenes snapshot? It's baffling that despite Bratz's massive success, no one has come forward with any information about this lost series in over two decades. The silence was deafening. I knew that the language barrier would make this investigation arduous, but I remained optimistic that if I could piece together all the information at hand, I might be able to make a breakthrough. Now, armed with these tantalizing details, it was time to scour the web and conduct a thorough investigation. In this chapter, I delve into two websites, the primary Japanese Bratz website and the official page of singer Boa. Armed with the Wayback Machine, I set my sights on dates that were in close proximity to July 2003, hoping to uncover fresh information regarding the release of Cool TV and any of its musical endeavors. My search of Boa's website on the Wayback Machine proved to be fruitless, as I couldn't find any additional information about her debut single. However, the track was listed on her discography page, along with a link to the official Japanese Bratz website, bratzpack.jp. Without wasting any time, I loaded up the archived site on the Wayback Machine, fervently praying that I'd stumble upon some valuable evidence. Thankfully, my search of the Bratz website yielded a treasure trove of new information that had yet to be added to the wiki. I was able to obtain the partially recovered pages of the discography pages of both Boa and Christina Milian. After translating the text on Boa's discography page, I discovered the exact date that Cool TV premiered, which was July 3rd, 2003. Moreover, I learned the precise times the show aired each week. According to the post, Cool TV graced screens every Thursday night at 9.54, with a repeat of the same episode airing at 2.03 a.m. past midnight on Fridays. I was now able to confirm that, like the wiki had mentioned, the show did in fact air in July, and more specifically, it premiered July the 3rd in 2003. We now had full confirmation on the two air times for the series each week, but I was still unable to confirm how long the episodes ran for and exactly how many episodes had been produced, and there was still the question of when exactly the series had officially ended. With this knowledge about the series schedule, I decided to dig a bit deeper, and a quick Google search led me to a listing of Show Me What You Got on the Japanese HMV website. On that page was a short blurb about the album release and its relation to Cool TV, and I was surprised to learn that these episodes were not two minutes long like mentioned on the wiki but would actually run for a total of six minutes. 
The collaboration between popular American group Bratz and BOA has been realized. The new program, Cool TV, broadcast every Thursday from 9.54 to 10 o'clock on NTV, will start from July 3rd. The content of this program is a short story unfolded by Bratz members from the United States. Bratz's CD debut has been decided as it is in the United States and a sudden co-starring with top artist BOA, also with an appearance from Howie D of the Backstreet Boys. With this newly acquired info, we now know the exact date and time of Cool TV's airing. Knowing the episodes are six minutes long, we can confirm that the exact scheduled dates were Thursday nights from 9.54 to 10 p.m. with a rerun episode airing past midnight from 2.03 a.m. to 2.09 a.m. The smallest of dents had been made at clearing up the run times for Cool TV. Yet when exactly the show got canceled was still a complete mystery. All we knew for sure was that based on the wiki, it was canceled sometime around September of 2003. So I decided to put a pause on this section of the search and proceeded to go up my investigation from a different angle. I wanted to quickly look more into the supposed voice talent rumored to be behind the characters of Cool TV. Feeling drained from scouring archived websites, I decided to switch gears and take a more proactive approach to gather information. I set my sights on investigating the rumored voice actresses who had lent their talents to the Cool TV series. My goal was to obtain direct contact information and establish communication with them. Who knows? Maybe they had keepsakes, old memories, or souvenirs that could be featured in the documentary. Unfortunately, the voice of Sasha remained unidentified, but all the other Bratz characters had their voice actors listed on the wiki. I remained optimistic that by focusing on these four actresses, my investigation would lead me closer to the answers I so desperately craved. According to the Bratz fandom wiki, Asami Yoshida had provided the voice for Jade. Yoshida was a Japanese voice actress represented by Arts Vision. Some of her more notable voice work was on Naruto Shippuden, the Japanese dub of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, and Octopath Traveler in 2020 as the voice of Odette. I tried to reach out to the agency that represented her, and wound up sending a letter in English, hoping that if anything, the company would have a department that handled international inquiries. The only other points of contact I found was a Twitter profile that was supposedly the actress's official account. With everything being in Japanese though, it was a little hard to confirm if this was, in fact, her. From what I could see, Asami had last been active in June of 2022, but unfortunately, her DMs were not open to the public. With that, I had to move on to the next lead. Another name on the list was actress Chiaki Kawamoto, a Japanese actress who supposedly did the voice for Yasmin. Aside from her time on Cool TV, she appeared to have a large body of acting experience on live action television and was most famously known for her work on Kamen Rider X8 and Kamen Rider X8 True Ending. Searching up Chiaki Kawamoto unfortunately turned up a lot less results, but with her being credited on IMDb, I was hopeful that I would find some additional contact information on her such as her agent representation, a phone number, or even her email. Sadly, nothing had been logged under her contact page, so I was forced to move on to my third available lead. Next, I took a look at the actress Rumi Sabnani, a Japanese Indian actress who was reported to have performed the voice of Chloe. According to what I had found online, Rumi was represented by the model and artist agency known as Oasis Styling. I was surprised to discover that the actress had listed her voice work on Cool TV in her public Public online resume. With an actual acknowledgement of this past acting gig, I had high hopes that she'd have a greater recollection of her time working on the series. Her resume referenced some English fluency, so I decided to contact her agency inquiring about a sit-down and hoped for the best. While waiting for a response, I went ahead and tackled the last name left on the list. The Japanese voice actress for Dana, Hana Erika Koller. I discovered that Erika was an English-speaking, half-American and half-Japanese model and actress Affiliated with AVAX Entertainment, Arika did television work, magazine and print ads, stage acting, along with minor voice acting in anime. Her earliest role had been listed as doing voice work for Cool TV as the character Dana. I then attempted to find the best way to contact her. Unfortunately, all I could really find was her Instagram and Twitter, and though like Rumi, she had also spoken English, I had little hope my message would carry through. But I sent a message regardless and kept my fingers crossed that eventually I would hear back from her. Thank you.
Weeks had passed, and there was still no word from any of the voice actresses I had attempted to reach out to. I was disappointed, but I wasn't quite ready to throw in the towel. There were still many avenues on my list to explore, and I was confident that with the right Google search, surely I'd be on my way to finding some sort of revelation. After investigating the possible voice actors, I decided to see what I could find by googling several Japanese phrases containing the words brats and cool TV in the hopes that something else would pop up. After a lot of back and forth and constant translations, I'd stumbled upon the archive page from a Japanese blog known as unknown24.net. The site seemingly kept track of different music-related events in Japan such as album releases and concert tour dates. I couldn't be sure whether or not this was a collection of entries from different authors or if it was just one person creating these entries dating all the way back to 1999. On this blog, however, there were a few entries that contained the keywords of phrases such as brats and cool TV, and learning this was enough of the push I needed to skim through most of the blog. It was a lot of translating, but I was able to collect the following entries. The first brats related entry was a blog post documenting the release of Boa's single, Show Me What You Got, made for the Bratz Cool TV series. While not hugely noteworthy, the more I searched through the website, translating the text as I went along, I began to find much more promising pieces of evidence. The author had also provided a link to the official Bratz page on the Nippon TV website, the channel in which the Cool TV series had been airing. This site was also listed among my many leads of places to investigate further. Further. With Nippon TV being a vast television network with a long list of programming, I was lucky to have found a direct Bratz page link shared right from the blog itself. Now I wouldn't have to spend hours translating and sifting through portions of the Nippon TV website from 2003. Clicking the link directly of course led to dead web pages, but after using the Wayback Machine, I was able to recover some of the old character bios that had existed in promotion for the Cool TV series. Out of all five girls, I was able to cover the profile pages for Chloe, Sasha, and Jade, each with their own unique bios. The following read is a very rough translation of the character bios found on each page. Chloe. Angel. Former Miss Ohio. She is a bold and action-oriented leader who likes to manage everything. She is the older sister type and likes to talk a lot. Her favorite phrases are, my gosh, and Jesus. She has a habit of having all the members recite the brat's rule at the end of the day. Sasha, hip hop star, R&B, bunny boo. A bit sarcastic and uses male language. Anti-establishment and excessively exaggerated expressions are frequently used. Jade, loves cats. A mysterious Asian who lives in New York. She loves loves unusual things, and even after coming to Japan, she wants to see Fujiyama, Geisha, and Ninja. It seems that she especially wants to see Harakiri, but no one ever takes her seriously. For those of you who don't know, Harakiri, similar to the act of seppuku, is a ritual ue eyed by disembowelment with a sword, formerly practiced in Japan by samurai as an honorable alternative to disgrace or execution. Yikes. Though the tiniest defeats, this Nippon TV finding gives us at least some insight on what sort of personalities the brass characters may have had in the series, which some could argue isn't too far off from their personalities in the subsequent English series that would come to follow. Luckily for me, the more digging I did on this blog, the more little tidbits of information it had to offer. And right when I thought my search had just about wrapped up, I came across a curious and somehow fully active PDF file. Within the depths of the Japanese music blog contained a post summarizing the joint deal between MGA Entertainment, Avex Media, and Takara, the Japanese toy company, and what their future initiative was for the Bratz brand. Under the blog entry titled Visual Artists Affiliated with Axive, the author goes on to leave somewhat of a cheeky remark about their thoughts on the Bratz brand trying to turn their dolls into virtual idols. The author writes, It seems that there is a fashion doll called Bratz that is a hit in the United States 
States. I don't know about that. <laughs> but in order to develop it in Japan, Takara and Abex have jointly launched this project. The author embedded the PDF file outlining the full press release, and much to my surprise, after all these years, the PDF link was still fully intact. I immediately downloaded the PDF and proceeded to translate it from Japanese to English. What I got back was a very rough translation of the press release, but I was still generally able to comprehend everything written in the document. Though not an explicit mention of Cool TV, the author quoted a section from the PDF regarding AVEX's involvement in the joint deal and how they plan to manage and best market their virtual artists. And part of that plan included TV program appearances. Specifically, Bratz will be affiliated with AVEX Group's artist management agency, AXIV, as a virtual artist appearing in TV programs, commercial tie-ups, music activities, etc., and using promotional methods unique to the AVEX Group from this spring onwards. We plan to make a debut in a form that is closely linked to the development of Bratz brand products. The document itself is a pretty interesting read and goes into deeper insights on the proposed business model and marketing plan MGA Entertainment had planned in order to maximize the sales and popularity of Bratz in Japan. If you'd like to read the document in its entirety, you can find links to the full press release in both Japanese and English in the description of this video. I wondered what else could possibly be hidden inside of other Japanese blogs from the early 2000s. After having done a full scan of the website, I decided it was time to retrace my steps and see if I could figure out the exact origins of some of our largest pieces of evidence. I decided to try my hand at figuring out the correlation between this mysterious video to Cool TV. Reflecting on my leads, I realized that I needed to conduct a more thorough investigation of a crucial piece of evidence that had been lingering on my detective board for some time now. It was a shoddy, low-quality music video that I had sourced from the Lookin' Bratz website. Rumor had it that this footage was somehow connected to the Cool TV series. I needed to ascertain whether this video was a promotional material for Cool TV or an entirely separate entity. On the Lookin' Bratz website, the owner writes, I am not too sure what this was used for, but it was uploaded by Bratz. Bratz Mania, a fan site that was running in the mid-2000s and 2005. Quality is not the best. The animation style is similar to how the Bratz were animated in the Show Me What You Got video and Cool TV pictures, so it is possible this may have ties to the series. When I attempted to track down the owner of the Bratz Mania website, I was able to find the original site URL and entered it into the Wayback Machine to see if I could discover any other details about this bizarre music video. Unfortunately, my time on what was left of the Bratz Mania website was cut short short, as I quickly came to discover that the entire website had been overrun with viruses and it was almost impossible to navigate at that point, so I left. I had to figure out some other way of investigating this video, so I decided to go back to Google and tried my hand at alternate search terms in the hopes that something would surface. And eventually, I stumbled upon a group discussion between users on an old message board called Bratz World about the Morinaga chocolate bake ads in Japan. As I scrolled through the thread, I noticed an exchange between two users discussing footage they had seen on the Japanese Bratz website that they believed was a trailer for the upcoming Bratz movie. In this conversation, the users discussed seeing a stop-motion animation. I went to a Japanese website that is supposed to be the Bratz Pack website in Japanese, and I saw the preview of the new Japanese Bratz movie, and they used the actual dolls. Then I noticed that Jade's wrist had a little ball socket, and then I saw that Jade was showing Yasmin her bracelet and twisting her wrist. I can't do that. Hey, Flippo99, do you have a link to the site you found that video on? Yes, I do. www.bratspack.jp. Click on the TV, or click on movie, and then click on the TV. From reading this, I'm quite positive that the stop motion video sourced from the Lookin' Bratz website was in fact related to Cool TV and was most likely the video the English users on the Bratz World forum had seen on the Japanese website. The footage that they were referring to couldn't have been a preview for the upcoming Bratz movie that would be released in August of 2004 because the first Bratz movie, Bratz Starin' and Stylin', was actually a fully 2D animated film and not a stop motion movie. The users even referenced that 
that the dolls were live action and more articulated than their American dolls due to the brats being ball jointed. I'm inclined to believe that what this user had actually seen, which was described as a brats movie on the Japanese website, was actually intended to be a promo advertisement for the cool TV series. In the video, we see one of the brats wearing a bracelet, and like the user described, her wrist is noted to have moved. The character was ball jointed and the dolls were in live action, something the user noted wasn't how Bratz dolls are typically made. The promotional images seen in the trailer also match much more closely to the images available on the site at the time. This user's recollection of the movie seen on the Japanese Bratz website very clearly lines up with what we can see illustrated in this video. The confusion that it might not have been related to Cool TV at all was probably due to the fact that the short, for some odd reason, had entirely English characters and was listed under the movie section for the original Flash website. This can be confirmed by checking the layout of the original Japanese Bratz webpage in 2003 to the Wayback Machine. After finally unraveling the mysteries surrounding the music video, I was itching to move on to the next critical piece of evidence, the enigmatic Cool TV photograph that I had found from the Lookin' Bratz website. I was convinced that tracing its origins could provide more insight into the production of Cool TV. Driven by my insatiable curiosity, I immediately initiated a reverse image search of the photo. Sadly, this did not yield any unique results. Undeterred, I turned to Google and scoured the web for any other links containing containing the keywords Cool TV and Bratz. I sifted through countless repetitive search results, lost in a sea of unrelated web pages, until something had caught my eye. My search led me to a Japanese website known as Jidaya. Jidaya was a tourist location and special service based in Asakuya, Tokyo, that essentially provides customers with a traditional Japanese cultural experience. On their company profile, they state that their aim is to offer the ties of the downtown area and good old Japanese culture in a visible form. Jidaya offers five main services, rickshaw rides for sightseeing, the traditional Japanese experience, kimono rental, retro cosplay of the Meiji and Taisho eras, and a Japanese rental studio with distribution equipment. Browsing through the website, I kept asking myself how in the world this location could possibly be related to Cool TV, until I stumbled onto the Jidaya press page. Under the press page were archives of public events that had taken place and been featured at the Jidaya. Under the section titled Media Information, I scrolled down to September of 2003 and lo and behold, there lied an entry titled Cool TV Bratz NTV with a description reading, Rickshaw and Store were photographed. Next to it was the tiniest of hyperlinks and upon clicking it, I could feel my jaw drop to the floor. There it was. This was the very photo that had been circulating online. It was now an undeniable fact that the Jediah was one of the many locations used to shoot episodes of Cool TV. My guess is that at least two episodes had been filmed here, since the informational bit on the promo card said rickshaw and store were photographed. The store, in this case, being the rental studio, the same location where this photo had been taken. According to the entry, the filming had also taken place on September 4th of 2003, the same month the series was said to have been cancelled. With September 4th falling on a Thursday, and the episodes being only 6 minutes long, I wondered if perhaps this was filmed and intended to be released the same day, or if this was in fact shot and scheduled to be released the following Thursday. I also couldn't say for certain whether this photo had been from the last episode, since it was said that Cool TV had come to an end sometime in September, but we could now deduce that this had either been one of the final episodes to air or the last episode completely.
Determined to unearth any additional information on this elusive Brat series, I embarked on one final sweep through the endless abyss that was the Google search. My tenacity knew no bounds, and I found myself stringing together multiple combinations of both English and Japanese search terms, hoping to strike gold. And pretty soon, I stumbled upon a Japanese five-channel doll thread. The users were discussing Brats dating back to 2003, and the thread provided me with invaluable insights into the Japanese Brats community. Community, the ad campaign Bratz had done with the baked chocolate brand, and most importantly, the forum revealed crucial details about the Cool TV series. Fans discussed many things like how they wished Cool TV had a DVD release, and how they were sad that the show aired on what were essentially dead time slots, as the program aired very late into the night. Many users on the forum had agreed that the show's low popularity was due to the fact that the show was not like a regular Monday to Friday program, like what had been documented on the wiki. Users also mentioned the series ending in September, but unfortunately an exact date couldn't be found. However, after discovering the Jediah entry, we know the show's cancellation was most likely sometime after September 4th. Perhaps the most significant piece of information I had been able to uncover from the forum was a user giving second-hand accounts and summaries of a few of the Cool TV episodes that had aired. So since we're approaching the end of the line in our deep dive investigation, I decided to do something special. While we weren't able to witness Cool TV in all of its glory, I've decided to do a recreation of what these episodes might have looked like based on the descriptions given in the 5 Channel forum. This is the retellings of Cool TV. I saw Cool TV. It was fun. Today we had a 4 to 4 matchmaking party. But I was a little happy that Rika played the role of a girl. A quote from this week's episode of Cool. Fashion is individuality and not about trends. And by the end of the episode, they are all in school swimsuits, yo. The updo hairstyles are also cute. You were able to watch Cool TV. I envy you. I'm really curious if the school swimsuits are part of a new line. On today's Cool TV, the Zen 5 are in mini length little monk costumes, all sitting in a Caesar while wearing a kimono. If they can bend like that, what kind of doll bodies are being used? It might be a body for shooting. I was doing Zazen while Jade was thinking about something wrong. My mother was talking to me during it so I don't remember it very well. Wow, somebody complete, please. Yesterday's Cool TV. The story of brats and others going to a Zen temple for training. Kiyu's outfit was cute. Chloe said, diet, diet while being hit by a waterfall. Jade, I remember she said, let's do a reverse pickup, and Sasha said something in retort. Dana, during her zen meditation, she has a dream, or delusion, that a cute guy was feeding her cake. Finally, seeing the fireworks, she says something like, beauty is only for a moment, and suddenly becomes enlightened. I don't remember everything as my eyes were closed during Zazen. Yesterday's cool TV was like a theme song, I think, or a song, for Boa's new album, but like, it was the Bratz song, like they were the artists. Bratz appeared on the radio to promote the song above. Bratz and others talk at their own pace, ignoring the progress of the red-haired mohawk foreign DJ. He was a real human being. When Dana introduced herself, she says something like, Mom? Dad? Are you watching? In the Bratz recording scene, she had human-sized headphones on her head. My details may be slightly off. Despite unsuccessful attempts to bolster Bratz toy sales in Japan during both its initial Tomi release and subsequent 2003 relaunch, the dolls have achieved widespread international success and, over the past two decades, have established an enduring presence within American pop culture and the fashion industry. It's truly astounding how quickly Cool TV fizzled out, with just a handful of episodes airing over a mere three-month span. If only the show hadn't been limited to Japan, I'm convinced it could have enjoyed worldwide acclaim, given the phenomenal success of the dolls during that time. Stop motion was rapidly gaining traction as an innovative and exciting art form in the Western world, making it all the more disappointing that Cool TV didn't stick around to capitalize on this trend. I felt at this point, I finally reached a gratifying milestone in my quest. While my efforts to unearth fresh details about Cool TV hadn't yielded an abundance of new information, my investigation had enabled me to reassemble some of the scattered pieces of this 
perplexing timeline. I'm thrilled to have been able to identify one of the filming locations for the series, and I'm indebted to the individual who is passionate enough about the show to provide weekly recaps. Without this invaluable resource, we'd be at a loss regarding the series' format. And maybe this documentary, like my previous Mean Girls video, could act as the smoking gun that could set off a chain of events leading people to come out of the woodwork with more memories about this series. Who knows, perhaps we may even be blessed with the discovery of full recordings of these shorts. While I may not be able to single-handedly solve this case, my meticulous documentation and careful curation of current evidence could serve as a roadmap for future detectives who venture down this rabbit hole. But before I go, I'd like to send a plea to my fellow enthusiasts overseas. I plan to eventually have this documentary subtitled into Japanese in the hopes it will catch the attention of Bratz fans that witnessed Cool TV when it first aired. Do you remember watching Cool TV on television? Can you recall any of the episodes? And was my reenactment based on the comment thread somewhat accurate to what you'd witnessed those many years ago? Perhaps somewhere out there in a storage locker or old warehouse or even in a dusty family attic lies videotape recordings of some of the Cool TV episodes. I know many American fans are desperate for the day these episodes can come to light and perhaps with the help of our overseas audience, this possibility can be fully realized. But until then, I'll be idly waiting and looking absolutely fabulous while doing it too.